almost 25 years, Guy Ritchie has been directing stylish features, best known for his British gangster films, such as Lockstock and Two Smoking Barrels, Snatch, Rock and Roller, and The Gentleman, as well as the Sherlock Holmes film starring Robert Downey Jr. Ritchie is often criticised for his gonzo entertainment filmmaking, his inconsistent performances at the box office, and mixed critical reception across his career has given him a bad rep. However, I believe he is one of the most successfully stylish filmmakers who's in the space of popular cinema. I also believe he is very much underappreciated as a director and has a unique style worth studying. Now, roll camera. Before the big screen, Richie worked as a struggling music video director. He directed, shot and edited several music videos, including many dancehall hits for artists of the 90s. Before the time Richie was shooting with big budgets, he shot on Super 8 and videotape, using experimentation to make up for his lack of budget and glossy visuals. Richie attributes much of his style and experimental camera and editing techniques to the limitations of creating video with little to no budget. The advantage of coming through um, the music video world is that you pick up all kinds of things that maybe conventionally you wouldn't pick up if you were just in, in feature films and your background just came from feature films because you push the boundaries more. You mm. find out more about the camera, you find out more about the format. Looking through Richie's music videography, we can see direct visual parallels to his feature films taking light inspiration from films of the crime genre, with a strong fixation on character and camera movement, and an experimental use of editing for stylish visual effect. Ritchie's on-screen movement could be broken down into a series of formal elements, the movement of characters, the movement of the camera in cinematography, the use of editing, and the composition of overall movement within a scene. Focusing on the movement of characters, Ritchie's male-dominated cast and the physicality of his action stars are a staple of his films, often using athleticism, violence and the male body as a key part of his visual spectacle. Though Ritchie doesn't shy away from hyper-masculine representations in his films, he more often uses hyper-violent scenes of hand-to-hand -hand combat as a vehicle for his action and stylish visual elements. Ritchie's character movement is amplified by his use of camera work, making use of bolt-on cameras and body-mounted Snorri cam rigs in his early career. Used here in his first feature, Lockstock. The mounted cameras fix the spectator's view to Eddie, creating a uniquely disorienting spectator alignment. The tight focal length combined with the use of crossfades and superimposition further exaggerates this effect. In his later films, coinciding with the development of video editing technology, Ritchie opted towards tracking the camera onto the subject by way of visual effects, using point tracking to stabilise the movement of the camera to the character, creating a similar result. This effect has been used by Ritchie in many of his films, throughout the action genre, and the commercial space, though he wasn't the first to do it. Ritchie often uses a free ranging camera, which allows him to compose movement, amplify action, and stitch several shot compositions together into a single unbroken take, using a moving master to cover scenes through several shot compositions, to create fluidity of movement, something he would go on to do for his fight sequences. Richie's choice of extreme focal lengths often amplifies his on-screen movement, as his wide-angle fisheye or long telephoto lenses add detail to minutia or amplified movements, cutting between the two extremes of the disregard for continuity style. While many modern directors shoot almost exclusively on prime lenses, Richie often selects zooms. This allows him to create an extra dimension of movement in camera through the use of crash zooms. He does this to focalise characters within the frame, to amplify performances and exaggerate the movement of characters. Richie occasionally digitally reframes his shots for the sake of style or to exaggerate movement, using digital pans and zooms to add movement to an image post exposure. Richie's stylish editing can be boiled down to the concept of fast and slow, with deliberate control over the pace and cadence of a scene. Richie's most memorable and successful action sequences make use of a faster than average cutting rate with deliberate moments of stillness. This builds both an anticipation for the action and allows the spectator time for contemplation creating more tension within the scene. Take the final fight scene of Snatch, Richie's second feature film, with an ASL of 3.6 seconds. The five and a half minute scene has 202 cuts, giving it an ASL of 1.62 seconds. The scene begins with a 36 second long take, as Mickey, played by Brad Pitt, walks up to the ring. Despite the use of a long take to open the sequence, the rest of the scene is cut very quickly. Just 13 shots out of 202 in the scene clocking in at over the ASL of the rest of the film, with many cuts in the sequence lasting just three frames, or one eighth of a second. Looking at the timeline of the scene, it is clear to see where Ritchie allows for pauses in the action, letting the scene periodically breathe.
before ramping the speed up again. Rich's use of slow motion, speed ramps, digital zooms and freeze frames, combined with a handheld camera, distorted sound effects and a cutting rate of less than 12 frames on every shot, creates a 20 second symphony of violence to evoke the chaos of the fight. Despite his moments of fast and intense action, it is Rich's use of stillness where he is most successful. Moving between the fast and slow states of cutting, with a variant of the formal techniques to complement before completing the scene. Now, we are fucked. While many directors slow the pace of a scene down for the sake of spectacle, Richie uses stillness with more nuance to craft his action, occasionally implying action by utilising off-screen space. More recently, Richie has used this fast and slow framework to create a more fluid style of action scene, having moments of speed and stillness exist within a smaller sequence. The style of action in the Sherlock Holmes films uses the fast and slow framework, but in a more fluid manner, using a stable camera, a wider lens, and slow motion with speed ramps to show more of the action on screen, the focus of the scene being the narration. Come now. You really think you're the only one who can play this game? With a lull before the action, and a stillness afterwards. The framework of fast and slow action was used again in this clip from King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Making use of a free raging camera, combined with a heavy use of slow motion and speed ramps to drive the action. Blending CGI with live action plate photography to construct the sequence. While not as visceral as Snatch or Sherlock, it shows the diversity that this stylish framework has. Arguably bastardising the style of action in the Kingsman films, directed by Richie's former partner in crime and producer, Matthew Vaughan, who seems to lean into the limitations of the aesthetic for the sake of style. In recent years, Richie has shied away from the style of action that has put him on the map, substituting fast and slow action for a greater focus on narrative cadence and control, with elements of action implemented throughout his films. I would like to see Richie return to his style of old and see more action films using the tried and tested fast and slow framework. <laughs>